Well, let's bring you from Capitol Hill, uh, Democratic Senator from Louisiana and Chairwoman of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, Senator Mary Landers. Uh, Senator, as you may know, I have been predicting that you will do what you always do and win this year by six and a half votes. Uh, we Republicans stay up all night and we always go, this is the year we get Mary. We're going to beat her. And then she wins by six and a half votes. And I just don't know how you do it. But the Washington Post, the fix is saying... You only have a 28% chance of winning. And I'm just wondering, where do we go? Can we bet on somewhere? Because I like your odds. If they're going to make 28%, I know how this story ends. Go to Ladbrokes. Talk, talk about your campaign. What's going on? How's it going? Joe, I'm not going to tell you my secrets, but I am going to win. And it's because I work hard for the people of my state and really keep their interest in mind. We've got a lot of middle class folks that really kind of don't understand what's happening in Washington, but they just want jobs and opportunity and good education. And I guess I've been pretty good over time about just staying focused on them. And, you know, so don't count me out because that's what I'm going to do in this race as well. Let's talk about Keystone, obviously a critical issue. We've been talking about it around the table. And we can't really figure out why the president, like the Washington Post, we really can't figure out why the president doesn't go ahead and just let this thing get through. What's going to happen? Is the Keystone Pipeline, uh, and is the bill going to pass? Well, Joe, I hope so. I've been working for over a year with Senator Hoven and a coalition of Democrats and Republicans. We have more Republicans than Democrats, but a good number of Democrats, 11 to 15. And 15 is the magic number to get to 60 uh, to send a bill to the president to get the Keystone Pipeline built. I think the Keystone Pipeline should have been built a year ago. It's been too slow. The process has been too slow. One of the things I want to do as chair of the Energy Committee is to make sure that we're meeting our environmental rules and regs. We're not trampling over the rights of states like Nebraska or, you know, South Dakota or North Dakota in laying these pipelines, but that we do it in a more expeditious manner. But, Joe, the other important thing to know is while we've focused a lot on Keystone, we've already built 2.9 million miles of pipe in this country. And news for everybody, we have to build more. I want America to be energy independent, and we can. I mean, it's really the first time in our lifetime, the first time even the industry has taken right. this taken by surprise. And to do it with Canada and Mexico so North America becomes an energy powerhouse is what I'm fighting for. So, Mary, we got a lot of people who want to talk to you, so uh, we're going to do a lightning round. All right. Mark Halpern, Senator, your, your extraordinary message discipline daunts me here, but I'm going to try. Around this table, <laughs> around this table, it is, is widely considered and in other circles, including in your party, that the White House's opposition to Keystone so far is based on political catering to wealthy donors who don't want it built. Do you agree with that premise? You know, I'm not sure. There's so many theories about the president. I listened to you all for an hour about this and that. And really, you know, I guess that's for you all to talk about and historians to write. I can just tell you that the people that I represent and the members of Congress that I talk to every day don't spend a lot of time talking about that. We really do spend time talking about how to create jobs, how to come together, how to, you know, work for the people of our country. And there's strong disagreements about this pipeline. I'm telling you, it's been a, one of a ferocious so, fight. So, so, but, but it is. Do you believe that it's politics that's stopping the president from supporting Keystone? Well, honestly, I think he has some serious questions about how much it would contribute to, uh, you know, to the deteriorating climate situation. But as you look at the facts, and you all know them as well as I do, it's a rounding error. I mean, it's basically less than, you know, a third of 1% yeah. of additional carbon to the atmosphere. And Joe, what I think you and Mika would appreciate is that the industry, which gets beaten up in Washington, sometimes by both sides, has been doing a really good job on efficiency and reducing our carbon output. And I think what Americans, when Americans look at what's happening in Russia right now right. and the Ukraine, I think it sends shivers up their spine, and it should. Let's go to because Chuck Europe Todd. is timid and can't get its, uh, you know, its right. energy muscle going. Gotcha. Chuck Todd. Senator, you got a lot of people. you got to win the votes of a lot of people that voted for Mitt Romney over Barack Obama uh, in your state in 2012. What do you say to one of those voters who says, you know what, I like you, but I want the Republicans in charge of the Senate. Why should they risk keeping the Democrats, the, uh, this Republican voter who voted Romney but likes you, why should they risk voting for you? Uh, if it means potentially a Democratic Senate. What do you say to them? 
Well, first of all, um, I think we need senators that will find a common ground and compromise, and I'm one of the few that's left. So getting rid of me and a few other people would not be good for the country and its future, in my view. Secondly, I've worked with um, six uh, six governors and three um, presidents. I've worked with Republicans and Democrats, and I've been consistently able, despite the gridlock, to make things work for Louisiana and the country, the Gulf Coast, pass the Restore Act, etc. So, I mean, when people are looking, which they are desperately searching for ways that Congress can work together, get, getting rid of people like me would not be a good thing. And so that's what I tell people, and they understand that. And people in Louisiana are quite practical. And um, hopefully I'll get back here and continue to be able to do that. All right, Senator, thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you so we much. We sure enjoyed it and hope you'll come back soon. I will. Thank you. All right, talk to you soon.